So hey guys, uh, my name is Himanshu. Uh, I am an indie uh, developer. Uh, I run a small indie studio called Sigma Games. Uh, we have released uh, four games till now. Uh, fortunately, uh, yeah, we have been making games for the, we have been like indie for past five years. And yeah, we have been, we, we, we recently released it on Android as well. So yeah. So I'm Chirak Chopra. I own uh, an all remote indie studio called Lucid Labs. We've been making games for the last six years now under the label. And uh, we recently, not recently, but a year ago, released a game called Possessions on Apple Arcade with the help of a publisher called Noodle Cake. And uh, we, we like to think we take pride in claiming that we make game for the, not for the masses. So we have a knack for making lighthearted experimental and games with the narrative wrapped around it. And both of us are really glad to be here and share our opinion and our views on, uh, you know, a practical guide to being in India, especially considering the country factor being in, in India, what other options or what other uh, methodologies like we both like to follow on our studios and to get things done from how to come up with an idea and ending with how do you get it published? How, what do you do post release what are the things you should take care of when you are doing it with self publishing or publishing with an external publisher and so on yeah as chirag said uh, we'll be talking about all the points uh, we'll be taking these points one by one and we'll be explaining you all the procedure that we follow personally in our studio uh, so starting off with uh, the first thing that comes to all of us is idea so everyone has ideas, right? Everyone has ideas. And I think I, that is my personal feeling, uh, personal, uh, what I feel is the idea in itself doesn't have any value unless you do a proper execution of it. So idea on its own doesn't have, doesn't, doesn't stand on its own. You have to work for it to make it possible to make it practical. So yeah, ideas are good. Uh, coming up with ideas are nice, but just an idea is not good enough. What do you think, Chalal? Exactly. Like, I think uh, you put it very nicely that ideas are not worth a dozen because, you know, like if you are even remotely associated with the industry, chances are that everyone has a, you know, cool idea to work on. And every day as a, as a game maker, we focus too much on, you know, coming up with a unique idea, coming up with an idea that will, you know, probably change the world and make you uh, rise apart the oversaturated market. But like like Himanshu mentioned, having ideas is really good. But uh, the key here is to quickly prototype your ideas, quickly, you know, create an understanding what ideas are best in order to continue them and what ideas are not worth spending time on. So I think a good uh, indie developer maker should also have this uh, notion in mind that the don't get stuck on coming up with various ideas, but spend time on, you know, probably one or two of them and spend time on maybe the evolution of it, see if it works and then move on to the other one. Yeah. Also, I would like to add to that, that many people get stuck to finding the perfect idea. There's nothing called perfect idea. Even if you're like brainstorm for years and years, you won't come up with a perfect idea. There's never going to be a perfect idea. Exactly. Sorry guys, my my electricity just went off. Okay. So while he's uh, away trying to figure out the electricity, so like Himan, what Himanshu was trying to say that a lot of us spend a lot of time on actually coming up with, you know, uh, really unique ideas. We spend a lot of time on actually figuring out a good idea for our, you know, maybe the game that you are planning to make, maybe some game that you have at back of your mind. So we spend a lot of time on uh, ideas, but we forget the the basics of, uh, you know, making a game is that if you think that that idea is worth spending time on, make sure that instead of just at least write it down first. I mean, document it, document the basics, the essentials. That is not only important for you as a maker to get a better understanding of your own idea, but also often you work in teams, you work with other people on board. So a documented idea will help you convey your thoughts in a much better way compared to if you're just you know, telling your idea orally. So make sure you start uh, the idea process with the document and uh, just roll with it. 
you will also realize that once you have the you know some sort of document ready in order to you know explain your idea a lot of the key a lot of uh, mistakes a lot of uh, you know uh, the 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 cons of the idea will start appearing to you even after you just write it down so that's a good step even for you to filter out the the bad design decisions from a good one and will also help you realize that okay uh if it helps or not so if you think it still makes sense on a on a document if you think it still makes sense when you tell it to your teammates or after the document is being reviewed by your teammates or other people peers then move on to the next step which is should be you know trying to scope out the idea in a way like how do you plan to probably take the next steps so himanshu is back with us so himanshu we were just yeah sorry guys talking about the idea on how to the first step should be to document the idea so not it just not helps you on filtering out the wrong decisions but it also helps the team you know conveying your idea so what are your thoughts about it yeah definitely uh, i see documenting uh, an idea as more of a brainstorming thing for myself and for the team so that uh, we'll have written notes whenever we want to get back to it some th- we can't remember all of the things at at the, yeah. at one point so documenting it uh, really helps us uh, i would also suggest you to not go into very much detail you don't have to f- document it like people tend to find this perfect gdd uh, uh, this layout that they will make a perfect gdd there's nothing a perfect gdd just go you have in your mind and then iterate upon it that will that, that will help you uh, like fasten up the process so that's what we follow how about you chirag uh himanshu yeah can you hear me yeah you were you were lagging the video and the audio were both lagging oh i am having internet issues now is it fine is it better now voice lag okay now is it fine guys can you please in the chat it's fine for us okay cool so mm. what i was saying was i'll just repeat once again uh that documenting don't go into very much detail when you're documenting an idea just write down the basic very basic things that comes down to your mind uh, there's nothing called the perfect gdd uh, just because because you will reiterate it upon upon it a lot because it's all about the reiter- the iteration upon it it's it's all about like uh, how you take it forward and how you improve upon it so don't go for the perfect gdd just uh, write down whatever comes to your mind and so that you can communicate with you with with your team yeah what do you think chirag what what are the process that you follow exactly like we spend uh, some time on i i since i am the 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 game designer uh, in the team i spend uh, not, like you mentioned not a lot but some point uh, some time on coming up with the basic version of the document it helps me you know refine the idea much better and you know detect if problems at that stage and if it makes sense to go on with it uh, if not like i think like you mentioned it's a good brainstorming tool as well not just for me but for the team as well so once we think that the document makes sense and the idea makes sense on the document we move on to the next step which for us in the studio we spend a lot of time prototyping we we i think uh, our prototyping to release ratio is probably 100 to 1 so we make 100 prototypes and we end up making one game which takes like 2 3 years and then we release it but i think we we are very since we all of us are like quite nerdy when it comes to making games we all of us are very proficient in you know prototyping ideas so we don't have to rely on one teammate on prototyping all of it uh i like i myself i spend a lot of time and i like prototyping my ideas because i think as a designer who comes up with these ideas i think i can probably do a better job on converting it to a prototype uh compared to anyone else but uh, yeah i think for us prototypes are very important because we we always have this notion that to prototype the ideas before moving ahead spending more time on it and seeing if i mean it's it's not fun on a prototype then we know that it won't be fun even if we spend like a year on it what what how do you take this process himanshu like do you spend time on prototypes yeah we do we do actually uh, we also believe in develop the core first 
and fail fast. If the uh, if the prototype is not working out for us, we'll just throw out the game and we don't shy out from like trying out different things in the like very fast in the very early stages because that's where we can experiment. Once if we go past a certain limit in one after we invest a lot of time, it's very difficult to go back and then reiterate on that same core idea. So so that's why mm. we focus on uh, we focus on the core mechanics. Uh, what all? But sometimes like. Sometimes if the game is too complex, you can't come up with a prototype that that fast. For example, some like strategy games where these are there are ten resources. You have different uh, things which connects to each other, and a lot of these mechanics are interdependent. Sometimes you can't make a prototype for such kind of projects, but we definitely try to come up with some of the things at least in the initial phase, so that it will give us the core of it. So we make exactly. the core first and see if it's fun. If it's not fun, we just reiterate it until it's fun. Yeah, yeah. So uh, one one question that I have about the process that you like to follow the prototype. So, is it when like when do you actually spend time on market research? Is it after the prototype, like when you're sure with the idea that you are going to develop it, or is it in between? How do you take on that? So we take market research way before the prototyping. Uh, after the idea, the second phase is our market research. We look at the certain kind of genre and the market that we are targeting. That if it's gonna be viable for us, if it's gonna be viable for us or not. So we look at the core idea that how is it performing? Uh, how is it performing on the global scale? How is it performing on the? How are the other games in this genre particularly doing? And we will focus on the like say Steam. We 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 check like if there are uh, if this is the genre that we are targeting, what how many number of reviews uh, will does this kind of games who who have been released in a recent times by similar size and similar concept? So we look at the reviews, how many reviews they have. That gives you very much like good idea about how that particular game is doing in the market. There's a something called the box letter method of of uh, getting the Sales by looking at the reviews. Just Google guys, box letter method. Uh, by that you can check out that how many game. Like you can have an estimate how much sales a game might have made. Interesting. I I didn't know about the box letter method. So even I learned something today. Thanks to you, Himanshu. But I think you guys probably have a good thorough process on market research. When it comes to us, we we. I don't think we can probably call it market research when it comes to our team. We probably spend time on the marketability of the game. You know, uh, mm -hmm. what we do is we, when we know for sure that, okay, this is the idea, this is the prototype that we are going to spend our time on as a team. We look for, uh, you know, different methods on what is currently hip in the market in terms of maybe the visual style, maybe the narrative, maybe, you know, the control scheme or even a platform. I mean, PS5 and Xbox Series X are really hip right now, but obviously for teams like us, like for Lucid Labs, it doesn't really make sense to make something for the PS5 because of the kind of games we make. But we look at other aspects of marketability, you know, what kind of art would sell, what kind of narrative would sell. If you're trying to convey a narrative with our game, would it make sense for our, our target audience? So yeah. we spend a lot of time on molding the game idea towards the target audience because we feel that hey i mean if we have a good game and if we can probably have some elements based on the marketability of the game then it would probably help us sell it even more and help us in the marketing of the game yeah that's a that's a very good point uh, that we also look at uh, the marketability because that is one of the very crucial point when you start marketing for the game that if people are getting enough eyes upon it or not so yeah, definitely marketability is one of the main, main, main that thing that you should consider before starting a project. That if if it's something that you can easily market, because there are some things that you can easily market, and there are some things you just you can't, no matter how good your art is. Yeah. Because if it's in a, if it's a ocean and there are so many so many fishes, uh, it's difficult to market something which is which already exists in like which already exists uh, in the current market. So if it's something unique. And it looks something different from the different uh, different from the others. Then yes, the marketability automatically increases. Mm, yeah, and 
moving on from the prototype how much time do you usually spend on the pre production of the game so uh, pre production we take our time uh, we at least give ourselves 3 to 4 months so after the launch of our one game uh, we 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 do we do we, we take about 2 to 3 year, uh, around 1 to 2 years at least for one single project after just after the launch we start working on the updates as well right uh, on the parallel we start working on the pre production of the ne- next project as well uh, it's so we take our time we take about 3 to 4 months uh, deciding that which and in this a lot of things comes we come uh, during this time we do market research we do uh, the marketability all all these things come during this phase what about you okay. chera yeah uh, a lot of the process i think are similar on pre production we we are very uh, we are very fond of you know coming up with very distinct looking game visually and the aesthetic wise so pre production is very important for us uh, yeah. once we uh, on the parallel we work on getting the mechanics right getting the the tech side of the game working and up and about as per the design uh but on pre production i like think likewise we spend around 4 to 5 months on pre production on coming up with a distinct visual style and aesthetic for the game i think that's yeah. something that's one of the core pillars for us because we like we like creating new and unique art styles for our game so probably that's one of the reasons we enjoy doing the pre production so much we mm. spend time on the narrative the the characters the visual style and yeah i think it, it it's fair to say that it takes around 4 to 5 months but i think that's that depends on the team as well we don't have a a very big team like we are 4 to 5 people working on this game remotely so mm-hmm. for us since we are not uh, you know a huge team for us maybe it takes a lot more than to compare to other teams where pe- they have you know good saturation of team members but yeah. uh, i'm assuming you have the same team chemistry and team yeah. structure right yeah we also we also are like four five people and uh, we also spend similar time and that's where we find and this pre production is the phase that we find we try to find our art style and which direction we will take our art and all those things so yeah it's pretty similar like very similar process that we also follow awesome awesome so i think in the pre production we also what i'd like to mention is like we said like it's supposed to be like indie teams are not usually a huge like they don't yeah. come up, consist of you know many members yeah. so yeah. this is where the scope comes into picture like Definitely. we can't yeah. Yeah. i mean we can't really afford to keep working on the pre production for say one yeah. year or two years because yeah. we we have allocated budget and resources that we need you know for the full release of the game so i think scoping out what you have to do in each stage uh, the pre production the production and post production is very important and i think a lot of people go by this notion that once you have uh, come up with a scope for your game and uh, before starting the game that you have to stick to it but i think uh, i don't think we've ever you know stuck to uh, a scope or a production plan ever since like we've made four games in the past but all these times we were always dynamically changing the scope yeah. the production plan as per you know maybe we spent too much time on doing something and then we realized we don't have time for the other thing so yeah. a scope is very important for an indie team to you know have yeah. a clear picture in your mind what is it that you plan to make what is it going to cost what is it going to cost in terms of manpower and then accordingly create a plan for each stages what do you think himanshu yeah definitely like that is the first thing that i see people making mistake who are just starting out that they can't define the scope uh, people over scope always they gonna over scope it so always uh, keep this in mind keep your scope limited uh, no matter what you are going to overshoot the time you think it's going to take to develop your game no matter what so so to avoid this feature creep creep just just go for cut 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 and avoid starting over so yeah keeping the scope limited always helps in the starting phase so so know your strengths that what you guys are good at what what you can do better in that particular time so always have this time limit 
and then add few more months to it because it's going to overshoot no matter what so yeah scoping your project is is the primary thing that you should do during your pre production phase or even before that sometimes because sometimes uh, we uh, these uh, we indies as we have limited budgets uh, to actually make something in this in this limited amount of time so to deliver something best in that limited time is is something that only only if you have a if only if you have defined the scope very 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 particularly very nicely then only you will be able to achieve it yeah yeah very well but i mean the the only cool thing about being an indie is that that you don't probably answer to someone so a lot of people i mean we yeah. we weren't really serious about this when we started but making your scope making your production plan is very important even if you are just three people working on a game because you know being an indie you have other challenges to face you have the money issue you have the the team members maybe you don't have a good set of artists in your team and you know there are different problems to face being an indie so make sure that you don't uh, you know be over ambitious when it comes to making at least the scope of the game like himanshu mentioned like keep your team strength in mind like what your team is uh, capable of keep uh, not just strength but the weaknesses also in mind so you don't uh, you know probably end up uh, losing on that project and no matter what timeline that you go with if you think your game will take one year it's safe to assume that it's probably going to take at least one year and six months so have some buffer in mind i mean uh, it's good that you can complete it on time but keep some buffer in time there might be several problems i mean what if your only programmer gets sick for a month right then that adds to the whole uh, timeline so don't be afraid of uh, keeping buffers and uh, once you think that it makes sense i think it's safe to go on to the next stage which is the the production stage yeah also before that i would like to add one more point uh, is about knowing your audience a lot of people like start making a game but they don't know who they are making it for and who they are targeting a, a lot of people who are just starting out like who are just making their first games uh, it's more of a hobby project so that's great but if you are, if you want to be an indie if you want to if you want to be financially independent then you have to know that who you are making your games for if you are making it for the masses if you are making it for the particular audience so yeah pick pick those markets uh, very precisely and research upon it yeah i mean if there's no one who's aligned to the, your vision or aligned to what you're trying to sell in the game then uh I don't think no matter how good your game is if it if you're having a hard time selling it marketing it and you know making it appear in the front of the right people then if nobody plays your game you will probably have no way of knowing if it's it is is a good game or not right so like himanshu said like uh, make sure even if you're making something niche if you think you're making something very niche and that's not generic in the market make sure at least you find something similar on the app store or the pc steam store wherever you're planning to sell it and see if there are any similar experiences on those stores and see probably talk to them and see if the kind of experience that you are planning to make will it make sense for that audience or not because no matter how unique or experimental your game is there will always be someone who's interested in playing it and your job as an indie is to make sure that you always know about where your target audience is and how you should approach them yeah definitely yeah so moving on to production after after you have defined all your scope you have your idea in place you have market analysis you have pre production in place then comes your production then that's where all the processes of uh, making stuff and iterating upon it goes into so how do you how do you uh, what's your production cycle like chirag so it depends on the scope uh, of the 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 concept and obviously the scope that gets redefined after the pre production of the game uh, after the pre production assuming we spend say 6 months on the game uh, we we felt uh, a lot of times where you know the initial scope that we had in mind going into pre production it gets changed due to some of the stuff that gets highlighted in the pre production and mm -hmm. then in the production Are, are some things that we take very seriously is the project management side of it uh it not it doesn't start in production but it starts in pre production again 
but we make sure that everyone in the team has clear cut idea about you know what are their daily or weekly or monthly task in terms of you know we like to work on different sprints and uh, milestone basis so mm-hmm. we have this everyone is like it's been 6 years now so everyone is really well uh, averse with the the project management tools that we use so we use basecamp as our you know the go to project management tool uh for assigning task for managing the milestones for managing sprints and mm-hmm. uh, it has a lot of features where you can not only assign tasks and sprints to others but it helps gives the team a clear cut idea of the timeline of the project uh mm-hmm. based on you know your milestone sprints and we've realized that when you work with external parties like maybe you're working with apple maybe you're working with a publisher these tools also help the team and the third party get a good idea of a production timeline and mm-hmm. probably suggest changes if they feel like hey this sprint is uh, you know taking too much time on a particular thing i think you should probably move this to some other sprints so basecamp and uh, slack are are two weapons of choice mm-hmm. where we use both of these to manage our project management and you know it helps mm-hmm. us keep, keep the timeline on track what do you mm-hmm. use himanshu so uh yeah we also use trello and slack and discord so we have daily meetings at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning where everyone is like where, where everyone is briefed what their today's task and what they are going to do they, it's it's like a like a basic scrum and uh, we we discuss that what everyone is going to do uh, today and uh, what their upcoming tasks are and if there is a bottleneck and if they are getting stuck somewhere we try to try to figure it out and work work it out so yeah uh, we also we also do this sprint by we also take the sprint by sprint and uh, we 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 don't have any defined sprint uh, as in we, we it's very and also our method is very agile uh, if something if some of the functionalities are not working we are ready to go back and then change into it so that's the flexibility that we get as an indie studios that we can we have this uh, we have this up, we have this authority uh, of taking decisions on our own and uh, we yeah. can we can do what we feel like yeah yeah i think that's one of the perks you get by having so for us it's always since we we have an all remote team no one is physical uh, physically present at a uh, one office i think for us it's it becomes very hard to you know uh, we we operate like an indie studio we have you mm-hmm. know the the agile methodologies and everything but i think we realized pretty soon uh, in this thing that if we are planning to do this all remote uh at least for the next few years we realize that it will only make sense to have at least good uh command over project management so that and the the fact that people come from different time zones so it becomes really problematic for us to be present when you know when you're working with people who have such weird time zones that when it's morning for you it's night for them right so right, right. you can't always be present uh to probably guide them or track the milestones and everything hmm. so we realized having these on at least on base camp and slack makes sense hmm. so like we don't enforce strict working hours for anyone so hmm. people come and go at their own time so they at least have an idea what they have to do on a weekly basis yeah 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 nice that's what that's that's the same that we don't have any restricted timelines for this and also we also allow them to t- like have decision making power so, so if something they come like if anyone comes up with a cool idea and we think it's 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 going to add value to our to our game we definitely try it out and we don't afraid from experimenting new ideas yeah definitely uh one other thing about our production stage which i'm sure it uh, probably is very similar to what you guys must follow uh during the production phase we also spend a, uh, a lot of time on when we have a part of the game ready we uh include some at least some friends from the game dev uh yeah. industry we include some people who've been loyal to our games from previous games and we try to get early feedback right when we are in the production stage so uh there are two reasons for doing that i mean one reason is so that what if you spend say a year or maybe more on the production only to find out that the target audience doesn't really resonate with what you're trying to sell 
the other right. thing is that being a small team most very often we don't have horizons as big as someone who has say you know a bigger team so we we feel that including these external friends play testers or people who like what we are doing including them and getting their feedback early on in the production stage helps us you know create yeah. this game for the audience instead of just having our opinion on it and it helps our game as well do you normally do that himanshu yeah 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 definitely i think it's a great point and everyone should do that because uh, after working on our own project we don't see its its flaws if we if we lo- if you are looking at a project very closely from day and night uh, we don't we don't look at its flaws that well so it's definitely good to have others eyes on it and get feedback from them so yeah we also do this uh, internal internal test we invite friends over uh, get the feedback early on and and we don't uh, tell them how to play or something we just we just want to see them play and that gives us a lot of feedback just by looking and just watching them play the game so that's where i think these events and also comes in later down the line where you where you visit these events for for the feedbacks and showcasing your games uh, because yeah. because these uh, <clears throat> because people feedback is very important early on and helps you improve your game a lot and uh, going to these events not just helps you uh, to to get in touch with all these other industry people it will also help you to improve your game even further exactly yeah i think events like these igdc i think we've yeah. been probably attending this for the last 7 8 years and uh, showcasing our games i think that's a very good point it helps us you know during the production it helps us get this feedback and mold the game and then you know when when we are getting ready for the post production stage or probably releasing the game it helps us create a good product which has some sort of opinion the the public opinion on it and not just our opinion so it definitely helps i mean uh that's that's the go to method for us to like for our post production plans i think things are a little different because we've uh, we've worked with publishers only in the past uh, we've only released our games with the publisher Uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people are very i think in india a lot of people are still confused about you know whether i should self publish the game whether i should have a publish publish the game yeah. what are the different perks so i think i think you are the probably the best person since you've self published bonfire 2 and bonfire right and probably you have a different perspective on why do you like self publishing compared to publishing with a publisher uh so so we have experienced uh, both sides of the things uh, we have self published uh, the bonfire 2 on ios and steam but uh, we have a publisher on board for other platforms say android uh, and switch so we we work with a publisher as well for other platforms mm. and we self publish as well so so the the benefits you get uh, for self publishing is that you have all the control you you get to call all the call every call all the shots and uh, it it so if you think you can pull it off then i would really suggest you to go for self publishing because publisher do take their cut and uh, the only thing is you have to market your game very well the publisher will help you get the all the get all the exposure uh, get in the front of in the front of the app stores so publisher may help you get a feature as well so in some of the uh, genres in some of the genres some of the market let's say hyper casual you you have to go with a publisher so it also depends on the kind of game that you are making uh, if it's something like premium game then yeah you can definitely go go for publishing self publishing if you think you can pull off a featuring on your own and you know the market very well otherwise i would suggest you to if you are starting out if you if you if you don't want to go into this business side and the marketing side then i would suggest you to find a publisher uh, they, they will really uh, find a good publisher that suits your game yeah 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 i think it it that's i think that's one of the key takeaways like if you think you can pull it off without a publisher then obviously i mean the app store takes their cut and then if you are comfortable with a publisher taking a cut and then you getting what remains i mean it's not something that doesn't work out again it depends on if you feel comfortable that in a particular genre you can do probably better than or probably similar what a publisher can offer then go for it for us we felt that uh, you know uh, for once we i think we probably 
if we didn't go with a publisher for possessions i think we would have never worked on an apple arcade game apple. and worked mm-hmm. directly with apple so i think it was just being at the right place at the right time and mm-hmm. at that time when we were approached by this publisher we were not really keen on getting published but you know the team realized that we were running out of money so the team realized in order to you know keep doing what we wanted to do and do different elements in the game it was mm-hmm. time that we require you know get some external help and at that time that was one of the reasons we wanted to go with the publisher and of course not just any publisher we wanted to see if someone was really experienced in the kind of game we are making whether they have experience in premium games since we only do premium games or they have experience in selling the kind of puzzle games we make so that's where noodle cake made sense at that time i mean we needed money we needed exp- expertise and being just the three member team i think it was getting too much for you know just me on doing the business side the marketing and the organic marketing but yeah i mean at that point we were not aware of the arcade thing and as soon as we got in we were like approached by apple on doing the arcade so it worked out i mean it's not something that would always work out i mean it's not something that if you go with a publisher you will always end up making millions of your games sometimes yeah. even going with a publisher will end up making you know the game not perform that well so it always comes down to if you have some particular needs that you think a publisher can fill go for it if you think you can you know do it without any external help again go for it if you have the right kind of target audience and the right kind of marketing strategies right so i think marketing is something which himanshu again you also have a good amount of experience in you know doing the organic marketing and you know spreading the word about your game so what are your you know usual ways of spreading the word about your game so for us marketing starts from the very first prototype just right after the prototype uh, we take marketing very seriously from the very starting itself because i think getting your game out there uh, in front of other people is the most important thing that you should do uh, because it's not just about making a game it's also about selling your game a lot of people don't realize that it's not just if you want to have a business around making games then you also know how to sell your games as well and who you are selling to so marketing comes in the very early phase for us uh, right after we have something to showcase something to present to to the audience we start posting about it on our uh, social media channels and our, on on reddit on uh, on discord we have a we have a now we have a huge com- community of uh, of on our server of about 800 plus people of bonfire uh, of on on the bonfire server so so that marketing helped us gather all those people and and make a community so it it takes years to actually build that community and you have to you have to keep doing it every week like make a make like commit yourself to marketing and post about it every saturday that's what we do we we follow screenshot saturday very very we, we take it very seriously and we have to post every saturday if we have something to showcase we never we never miss a screenshot saturday on twitter on facebook we post on the uh, different groups on the facebook on reddit uh, because since we have done a zero marketing uh, at least on the ios side we have done uh the zero budget marketing where we we were able to get uh, eyes on our games just without spending any money uh, just through organic marketing uh, so the only thing is you have to be consistent with it and uh, and yeah it should be this, uh, uh, that is also important that it's it's something should be presentable it should be marketable as well if it's something marketable it's easy, it'll be easier for you to market it so so start marketing even when you have a something to showcase right right when it's very early and don't think that people are going to steal your ideas or they're going to they're going to they're going to copy your games uh, so that's that really happens but uh, but put your games out there that's all how yeah. what do you think yeah. yeah absolutely i think uh, i think when you start making games as an indie everyone i think i had this idea in mind that if i show it to the public they will steal my unique game and they will release it before i do i think it's everyone has that fear that if i showcase my game at an early stage what if someone else releases it before i do right i mean yeah. at some extent it makes sense but then again uh, there are you know i mean if you are not really comfortable or 
you know, open about your game from the get go and the zero budget marketing that Himanshu talked about. It yeah. takes a lot of months on actually building a, you know, a good amount of fan base and hype for your game. And I know that it's very scary. I know you keep hearing about such news like people copying, but then again, as an indie, I think it's your best tool of getting your word out. So don't be afraid of showcasing whatever you had. I mean, showcasing good. Don't just put on your prototyping screenshots on social media just because you think it's cool. For the market, the first impression is always going to be the first screenshot that you post about your game. So make sure it's visually appealing, and you can. I mean, it's going to be a pain. Uh, so make sure you have someone in the team who really likes doing it. Uh, get this responsibility. You have to be like. As for us, we are very, very active at the time, or even at the production stage, on showcasing the game on Twitter, showcasing the game on Reddit, and showcasing the game on Facebook. And you will realize that all these three platforms, and I think Himanshu will agree with me. Even though all these three platforms look very similar, but all these three platforms have very different ways of when it comes to showcasing your game. I mean. on facebook maybe you can just blatantly write about what your game is and showcase a screenshot on reddit when it comes to talking about your game you have to be really 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 careful and you have to be really personal and see that it it doesn't look like a marketing post but it looks like something informative so again these all these three social media platforms they do wonders on your organic reach but you have to be very careful on where you post and how do you post like every every platform has their own tools and own rules exactly so what do what do you think about that iman yeah that's what do you think very, about that's a very good point that you that you put forward that on reddit you have to be very careful that what you are posting otherwise it's going it's going to backfire so yeah uh, putting putting your word out there and carefully looking at the at all the platforms that you are posting on is something that you should look at now also i would like to add uh, after the marketing part comes the the final 10% the the final part where where people get stuck and it's it's the phase that takes the most time that is the polish and the qa and the the polishing phase basically so yes. so, so it's it's said that this final 10% takes 90% of the time and that we that we have experienced personally because that polish phase is 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 somewhere is something that can either make it or break it and it's very important if you if you do that right so polish your game uh, don't forget to polish your game there are a lot of good talks available uh, on uh, on youtube regarding the poly- how to polish your game um, so yeah definitely don't don't skip that phase that is something very important and it will either make your product or break, break your product what do you think chirag yeah spot on i think uh the only thing i have to add is make sure you have good enough time on you know the last bits on the qa the polishing because you you are going to need it and then again plan it out carefully like how much time you should actually spend before the release of the game on all the feedback you can't take all the feedback in so make sure that you decide the right kind of feedback for the game and filter out the the bad one and i think we are running out of time so we have a lot of questions right now i th- i think it's best if we start taking the questions now and if you guys have like any other questions if you can't cover it you can probably reach us both on twitter or i don't know wherever we are i think twitter would be the best place to reach yeah, us yeah. on uh let's let's see if so, i can find some questions so yeah the vivek gupta has a question saying how to find a good team online Hmm. I think Chirag you'll be best to answer this since you'll be you have been running a remote team. So the best way is to be really active on social media like we always found our teammates on Behance uh, on Reddit on Twitter it depends on whom you're looking for an artist is really easy to spot on these platforms because they use some hashtags and some uh, Behance is a good place to find some really cool talent when it comes to artists so yeah for us it's a lot of cold messages and cold emails to these people we find really cool on the internet i just send them a cold email asking them if they are available and then get the project across and see if they are available yeah uh so we we 
we also post about it uh, we post of uh, our projects that we are working on and uh, whenever we have any requirement we post on linkedin and other platforms that if anyone are willing to work with us and this is the project and we are very uh, uh, like open about it from the very beginning so that's how we find our team members hmm. yep so uh, the next would be how do you plan out idea pitching and finalizing game idea as an in indie Himanshu, you want to take this first? So, how do you plan out idea pitching? Uh, I'm I'm guessing this is you're gonna pitching to someone, a uh, publisher pitching, or the or pitching it to someone. So, so have a good PPT, have a good presentation, make it presentable. You have to be presentable. You have to have the, your best screenshots of your game. Uh, you have to make. Uh, you have to sell your game think of it as a product that you are selling as a as a salesman and how would you sell a game to as a salesman to a publisher if you if you think if you think in that manner you'll be able to come up with ideas you'll be able to point out all the things that your game has and uh, uh, like how your game is different from others and how your game stands out and also it should be it should look good obviously it should have an art which is sellable so yeah keep all these things in mind and have a proper pitch for uh, before all this have an elevator pitch ready for you so that it should be a one line sentence that should explain your game uh, without going into any much details so it should it should explain the core of your game in just in a in a just in a in a very short form so have that elevator pitch ready and start with your elevator pitch and then expand upon it uh, in a presentation maybe yeah yeah spot on i think uh, i can't do a better job on explaining that so i'll just move on to the next question i see what are your thoughts on using mechanics similar to what players are familiar with versus introducing new game mechanics also your thoughts on introducing mechanics to different levels of players so we'll we'll take it as a two different questions so the yeah. first one uh, i think it's very 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 hard to actually come up with genre defining mechanics at this point right. you are always inspired by some other mechanics some other interaction some other probably uh, control scheme and your mechanics often uh, are you know come up with these existing things so i mean if it's entirely new obviously make sure like like we mentioned make sure that you f- are able to find the target audience for people who are interested in trying out new things if not i think it's always very easier to go with an existing mechanic and build on it because people can relate to it people can resonate to it and it makes your job easier to sell the game to that audience yeah yeah makes sense totally and the second question introducing mechanics in different levels so it it it's probably something that cannot be answered in a you know a very short amount of time it all goes back to the game pacing so you have to make sure that you've paced your game very well when it comes to introducing mechanics even though you think the player might be quite experienced in your mechanic or in the kind of game that you're making make sure you have a decent linear uh, going up upwards going graph when it comes to introducing new things in the level uh, linearly build on the challenging aspect of the game or the level and once you start doing that in in terms of levels you will realize you know how to differentiate between new versus casual player and frequent players yeah also i would like to add one more point to that a lot of uh, these levels what they follow is not they are they, they are not exactly linear in the upward direction uh, if you want to have a good experience if you want to give a good experience it's mostly like uh, going upwards and then there's a dip uh, there's an easier level in the middle to make a player feel that yes a eureka moment that yes they are now perfect they are now they now know this thing and then again there's a rise so so yeah uh, there are there are a lot of things that you can do uh, to to make your player stick around uh, and and make them feel good and then like it's like giving them cookie in the middle that oh you are doing great and then suddenly then then you increase the difficulty again so you, and so the, the the pacing of all this and introducing new mechanics uh, can vary from like uh, game to game but uh, but keeping the scale the the difficulty scale is something uh, that you should look at yeah definitely definitely moving on to the next one what's more important to you idea that you like to work on or the idea that you think will sell more manshu what do you think uh, i think it's a very interesting idea uh, 
see they, i think i think the first thing that comes to our mind is what we want to make that that is the first thing because there are things that will sell more we know a free to play game with with gacha with pr- proper meta and everything will obviously make us more far more money but uh, but that is not something that we like doing it we don't uh, for now we may we may change in the later we may have different plans in the future but for now we we like doing premium titles we like doing that are that feel like games like a proper experience rather than these these money grabbing games uh, where where it's more of a fluff on the outside and and it's they are not game games because we we all grew up as gamers and we want to give back to the community so so i think uh, that's that's something that we we really take it very seriously and we we, we look at the ideas that we really want to make first and then also make sure that it's earning money definitely i think yeah as in india i think the only reason why you probably are into the business of making games is because you want to make something that you like right i mean the only reason that you chose this difficult path is because you think your idea has the merit you think you can make something cool but again it all comes down to this uh, proper uh, you know marriage between an idea that you think you want to make an idea that you think will sell more you as a designer it's your job to always you know combine the best of both worlds so even though you think that you're making something really unique in the world but if there's no one to play it then you know this the idea will have no merit so yes uh make sure you combine the best of both worlds yeah great so chirag this is the question for you information about apple arcade is very scarce on the internet can you talk about your experience with apple arcade as you have successfully launched positions hmm uh so to to keep it short i would say that a lot of the information that i think assuming that you are interested in i won't be able to uh share a lot of insights on that but our being working with on an arcade game is really cool for a team in india especially us like we never imagined working directly with the apple on you know launching a game on their platform so it's a really cool experience i mean they were on board with the kind of vision we had for the game they were on board with the different ideas we had for the game and they just supported us right off the bat so it was a cool opportunity because again you don't get these opportunities every day in your life so working directly with apple on realizing you know what works best on an apple platform i think it was a really cool experience yeah great great so moving on so the next question, question yeah i think i'll just pick the next one i think we have time for one more how to manage money thing for new starters one should mm-hmm. i think it uh it's something very tricky uh in the starting obviously we don't have that much uh we can't afford that much we can't hire someone and it's it's difficult to give in a lot of a long amount of time to a long commitment to our projects so i think having us having your savings and working for a while in 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 a company and then and then honing your skills during that time is something that you can really consider uh, because that will give you experience and will teach you how the industry works from the inside and you will have uh, a more knowledge about the industry uh so getting an experience have some uh, have some money savings on the side and then maybe start working on your project on the side as well as a hobby and when you have have it to showcase and or present it to a publisher when you have the opportunity just go ahead with it uh and and take your chances yeah absolutely i think uh if it's your baby that you're planning to make i think uh no matter how hard the path is you will find a way to uh, come through and when it comes to money don't uh, go into this whole indie thing just because you think it's cool uh, you will realize that during the first 3 months the all the coolness of being an indie developer will probably wear out and if you don't have the necessary resources not just money or maybe the team or the tools you will feel that you know it's it's very hard to keep going so there's no shame on keeping a plan when it comes to money like some people like doing projects on the side freelance work on the side just to get enough money so there's no shame in that and please don't have any shame on you know earning money just to get your baby out in the market so yeah yeah i think there are a lot of questions uh, but i think guys if you want to uh, you know discuss more uh, chirag and himanshu both are on twitter they are on linkedin please connect uh, with these guys 
um guys th- those were some great insights uh, on an indie journey um and thanks a lot uh, on behalf of igdc for taking time out and sharing your experience and knowledge um so that is it guys uh, great session uh, thanks a lot again thank you thank you thank you everyone we'll be around if you have any questions please uh, please reach out to us on our twitter and i'll be hanging out on the lobby area for a while if you have any questions uh, just you can just uh, talk to me or and and chat with me over there all cool. right guys thanks guys bye bye thank you guys bye bye